Welcome to Study Show, the show where we sometimes talk about office thermostats. I'm Dan Brubaker. For as long as humans have shared offices, there have been wars waged within workplace walls. I mean, who hasn't encountered a passive-aggressive food label, or suffered an assault from a microwaved malodorant? But no issue has more directly pitted male and female co-workers against each other than that of office temperature. Women tend to want it warmer, while men typically prefer it cooler. As staff vie for indoor comfort, the conflict has turned the thermostat into a spot for discreet offensives and sniper-like counterattacks. But the result from a new study found there's more at stake than simply feeling comfortable at your desk. The scientists tested verbal and mathematic abilities of employees working in offices whose temperatures ranged from roughly 61 to 91 degrees Fahrenheit. They found that women attempted fewer questions and provided fewer right answers when tested in colder rooms. For men, the opposite was true. They tested worse in warmer rooms, although the effect was less pronounced. Now, just because we could, we presented the same tests to the study show staff. And here are some of the best responses we got. Clark from research gave his answers in a room set to a steamy 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The list of words he came up with was dust, sun, star, seer, heat, and Hades. Uh, I'm picking up on a theme there for a particularly sweaty Clark. Then, asked to calculate this sum, he put 284.666, which I'm being told would have been right if he hadn't added the devil's number in decimal form. Uh, who else? We got Clarice, who runs audio for us. She endured 61 degree temps. Um, adding up the numbers here, she had put negative 4, and then seems to have crossed it out only to then write negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not, I'm being told that's wrong uh, in a variety of ways. Uh, and then when asked to build words from the same set of letters, Clarice just wrote num, which is just not a word, period. Now, I should mention the study also involved a third task, what's called the cognitive reflection test. Similar in some ways to an IQ test, this test can, according to past research, give us a sense of cognitive ability. And I've agreed to answer the three questions they used in the study. I have not seen these. First one, a bat and a ball cost $1.10 in total. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Uh, 10 cents. Uno dime. Okay, I see. These are trick questions. All right, let's move to, let's do number two. If it takes five machines five minutes to make five widgets, how long would it take 100 machines to make 100 widgets? Hmm. Um, here's a better question. <laughs> How long will it take me to make a guess? Is it not? It's got to be a hundred, no? Five? Mother f uh, I see that now. Fine. Next question. In a lake, there is a patch of lily pads. Every day, the patch doubles in size. If it takes 48 days for the patch to cover the entire lake, how long would it take for the patch to cover half of the lake? Uh, Wait, so the dumb answer is 24, uh, but it's it's like exponential growth or something, right? So like 36? Is it 36? Mother of <laughs> Whew, did someone turn the heat on? I'm guessing that's what's going on. Oh, I'm, I'm being told that the heat is not on. And uh, what's more, the study didn't find temperature to affect cognitive reflection scores uh, for either men or women. <laughs> So you're just dumb, she says. Wow, thank you, Clarice. What? And you're still cold. Okay, this is, you know, not the time. Studies show that while the up button on a thermostat will make you feel warmer on the outside, a subscribe button will make you feel warmer on the inside. 